Today marks the 63rd anniversary of the desegregation of the Woolworth lunch counter. For the next 10 minutes, we will dig into the civil rights history of the triad. First, we are celebrating live at the Joseph S. Corey Convention Center at the annual fundraising gala. The International Civil Rights Center and Museum holds the event every year to remember the brave people who fought for their civil rights. The event honors six people who have worked to make our country a little more equal, including Reverend Bernard, Lafayette Jr., Katie Cashin, Yvonne Johnson, Kay Brown, and Mary Ellen Bender. Another very special honoree you might recognize tonight, WFMY's very own Sandra Hughes. She will receive the Trailblazer Award tonight. Sandra Hughes herself joined the sit-ins as a high school student back in the day. She says she didn't realize the kind of impact those demonstrations would have on the country. Well, I was a high school student and I heard that these four young men from A&T were going to be marching downtown to sit at the lunch counter at Woolworth. And I thought, well, you know, that's something we ought to do. <laughs> and so I would leave my high school in the afternoon and rush to A&T's campus so I could get in line, you know, with the, with the guys and all the other students who were going to march downtown. I don't think at that time I realized how much a difference that was going to make. But at the same time, I knew it was the right thing to do. Hughes says she hopes more people will stand up for what they believe in. What I'm hoping is that if there's something going on in your life mm -hmm. that you don't think is fair, and lots of other people don't think it's fair, it's time for you to <clears throat> step forward yeah. and do something about it. I honestly had no idea what kind of impact we were making when we were marching downtown yeah. back in, in the, the old days, so to speak. But I understand now that what that meant was you've got to get out there and you've got to do something mm -hmm. that's not only going to help you and benefit you, but going to make everybody in your life, in your world, mm -hmm. move forward. Education coordinator of the Civil Rights Museum, Cassandra Williams, also talked to us today. She says she hopes the gala tonight inspires young people to keep fighting for their rights. We have to realize that those who marched and sat at the lunch yeah. counter were youngsters. They were teenagers, yeah. basically. Yeah. <laughs> and we want to inspire this next generation. A lot of the funding that will come from this gala tonight will go toward our educational programming. Let's dig into the history of those sit-ins. The journey to complete the integration of Woolworth started in February of 1960. Four North Carolina A&T freshmen, David Richmond, Franklin McCain, Azell Blair, and Joe McNeil walked into the FW Woolworth store and sat at the counter. The staff refused to give them service, but they stayed. The next day, more students sat. The number climbed higher until six months later on July 25th. The four students returned and were finally served at lunch. Now the Woolworth building is home to the International Civil Rights Center and Museum. The CEO of the museum says they are on the way to becoming a national historic landmark. The International Civil Rights Center or the F.W. Woolworth building would be the first uh, cultural entity to, to be inscribed as a World Heritage Site. So it's not a foregone deal yet and as I said 10 years we're now six years into the process there is lots of extra work that must be done once we become a national historic landmark you can visit the museum downtown and see the counter activists set at as they protest for change. Now, the Woolworths in Greensboro wasn't the only store in the triad to have sit-ins in 1960. Students protested at the Woolworth lunch counter in downtown High Point. This one led by high schoolers, the first of its kind. 26 students inspired by the Greensboro sit-ins marched to Woolworth and demanded equality. You make that decision sitting there to decide that you are going to do something about it and you stood up and went to Woolworths in that back door at four o'clock. <laughs> exactly four o'clock. The four students who started the sit-ins in Greensboro became known as the Greensboro Four, while the students in High Point became the Woolworth 26.
And July 25th is not just a day in civil rights history here in the triad. Today would have been the 82nd birthday of Emmett Teal. Nearly 70 years ago, the 14 year old was accused of whistling at a white woman in rural Mississippi. He was abducted, tortured and murdered. The Biden administration is establishing a national monument paying tribute to the Teal family and shining a light on this part of American history. Natalie Brand reports from the White House. On what would have been Emmett Till's 82nd birthday, the White House honored the 14 year old's memory and his mother's with a national monument to cement their place in history. We had another chapter in the story of remembrance and healing. Till's cousin, Reverend Wheeler Parker Jr., was at the White House Tuesday and with Till in Mississippi in 1955 when he was abducted at gunpoint. Taken to be tortured, brutally murdered. murdered. Till's mother, Mamie Till Mobley, chose to have an open casket funeral for her son, the public viewing of his mutilated body helping to galvanize the civil rights movement. She said, let the people see what I've seen. Let the people see what I have seen. Chicago's Roberts Temple Church of God in Christ, where Till's funeral took place, is one of the new monument's three sites. The other two are in Mississippi, where Till's body was recovered, and the courthouse, where his killers were acquitted by an all-white jury. This is history we shouldn't ever have to learn, but it did happen. Alan Spears of the National Parks Conservation Association worked on the National Monument designation. What is your hope for people visiting? My hope for people visiting the site is to learn more about this tragedy and then the resilience of people like Mamie Till Mobley and the other foot soldiers in the civil rights movement who didn't run away from this tragedy, but instead took the resilience to move forward with the quest for civil rights and human rights in this country. Spears says remembering painful parts of America's history will ultimately help the nation heal. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, The White House. Till's family is raising money to restore each of the sites for inclusion in the national park system. 